Bonjour, mesdames, messieurs. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this round table. That is the first uh, major session after the opening ceremony that just ended. May I introduce this round table as the icing on the cake of ACCEPT anniversary, the association, the African Association of Public Service Organizations, which is celebrating its 20 years, and it is doing that under the World Association of Public Employment Services with a round table whose theme is topical, the pertinence, the relevance of public employment services in employment promotion. So let me give you the three uh, segments of this session. So each panelist will take the floor. Directors General of Public Employment Services that are sitting on both sides of the hall. Then we'll have discussions with the participants. So my first question to set the ball rolling is directed to you, the Executive Director of WAPES representing the, the, the president of WAPES here. Concretely, what is the contribution of WAPES in the promotion of employment at the world level, Madam Executive Secretary? Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you for this. The mission of WAPES is to know its members and have a knowledge of their needs, accompany them, and how to implement their public policies. WAPES, the executive secretariat, will not have a response to bring to this. Our main role, our major role, will be to provide this public service in relation in to link them up with other public services that can help them to construct their own service offer, its own support to uh, the target group. Thank you very much, Madam Executive Secretary. Now, I would like to talk to the Honorary President of WAPES, the Director General of the National Employment Fund of Cameroon, Mr. Kami Muti. I'd like to focus on two figures, Mr. Honorary President. First, 7.2 percent of unemployment rate in Africa against the world average that stands at 5.6 percent. It's paradoxical that in a continent where you have everything, we still have such record unemployment rates. What is your take on this? Effectively, I think it is paradoxical, and we've said it quite a number of times. In a continent where there is so much to do, infrastructure is absolutely insufficient. Exploitation of all the wealth, whether the subsoil or added value, are still very insignificant. It is paradoxical to say that this continent is where it's the one that records the highest number of, un of unemployed youth. Africa, when we talk of Africa, we talk of a continent which from the freedom to decide and design their own development is very recent. When I think of sub-Saharan Africa, it is in the 1960s, so hardly 60 years, that this continent exists. And they have to face a lot of problems. And I think 
that for a number of years now, our governments have gained awareness of what they had to do, of the policies that were to, to be put in place so that effectively we should come out of this paradox which reveals to us that we have a lot to do. We have 40% of world of world uh, wealth, but yet we are the poorest continent. It is a continent where the youth remain unemployed. I think it's a question that will take time, but it is considered it is considered by our government through policies and through support at the multilateral level and even at the bilateral level such that we can come out of this uh, situation. May I insist on this question, Mr. Director General? What is the cause? Is it policies? Is it an issue of organization? It is the exploitation of the wealth. You realize that it's the economy. It's our economies that are weak. Our economies don't give sufficient added value. The rates of added value are very low. So, I mean, well, that is where the jobs are found. Our economies have remained, according to the premier law, exportation economies of raw material and minerals. When you hear the growth rates in the world, when they say there is need for strong growth rates for unemployment to reduce, I've always stood against because ex daily experience shows us the opposite. Cote d'Ivoire, for example, for one or two years had 12% unemployment rates, unemployment, or oh, sorry, growth rate of 12%, but unemployment did not change. Our uh, economies have suffered travesty. When you hear that there is drop in oil prices, the growth rate drops and our countries begin to face difficulties because these growth rates are not based on added manufactured added value in some countries chicken is imported from europe chicken we were at a restaurant toothpick in a country that produces wood timber is imported you see countries just take the the, the highway to Douala or the west region you will see mangoes rotting in the bush, guavas and so on. Meanwhile, we buy um, we buy these products, finished products in supermarkets. Meanwhile, we should not be importing them in our country. Secondly, there is insufficient exploitation of human resources to fill the gap, the lack of infrastructure. For example, when in Europe, they had a comparative advantage, mass unemployment, meaning there were people who were unemployed and they had materials. What did they do? They made use of the two advantages to come up with what you have today. Do you know that in Norway, those train tunnels were constructed. Do you know how they were? Do you know how they were dug with the hand? Go to Europe, to Rome, to Paris. You see the ground. It is stone. It is stone. It is stone. But here you see a mountain. You see children who are there unemployed, and there are bad roads. I'm giving you an example for you to see all what needs to be done so that the exploitation of all what we have as resources and especially human resource and policies of course that will go in this light to be able to solve this problem. Thank you very much. We are lucky to have in this panel a representative of employment poll
who will tell us about the French experience. So I would like to ask on policy questions. Now, let me go to Ms. Janine Eba, who is Director of Legal Affairs at the Ministry of Employment and Vocational Training of Cameroon. We are talking of policies on employment. Tell me, Madam, what can we retain from the employment policy in Cameroon? Good afternoon. Thank you for this question. I'd like to say that for the Cameroonian government, there are two areas of intervention, employment and vocational training. Regarding employment, government has put in place with national stakeholders a national employment strategy that gives all the necessary elements within the framework of promoting employment. And regarding this strategy, recently, the government validated with the national sector the strategic thrust of the promotion of, of uh, employment promotion, decent employment, promoting entrepreneurship through SMEs and SMIs, governance, and developing the offer of vocational training. Now, regarding the second thrust, which is vocational training, the head of state just promulgated the law of 11 July 2018 regulating vocational training in Cameroon, which makes of vocational training priority, a national priority, which means that all investments that should be made, all action plans must, be, must highlight vocational training. As the Director General was saying a while ago, we have a serious problem of competence in our country. When you take a plumber, for example, to find a plumber who respects international standards is very difficult in this country. So the government thinks that vocational training, which is effectively a support instrument to uh, promoting employment, is fundamental. That is why this same law provides for the first time the prospective implementation of funds for vocational training. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Director. We will definitely come back to that with the public. So let's go back international and uh, meet the President of ASEP, Director General for National Employment Agency of Mali. Mr. President, we heard uh, the Executive Secretary of WAPES. What kind of relationship do you have? What's the relationship between uh, WAPES and ASEP? Thank you, moderator. I would like to say that ASEP is a component of WAPES. So it is the shadow of WAPES in Africa, kind of. So today, in WAPES, there is a structuring of some world regions. You know, Africa is represented by ASEP. African Association of Public Employment Services, there is a Maghreban region, uh, Europe, and so on. So, ASEP is an integral part of WAPES. For at the level of, at the board, the board of WAPES, there are four uh, members, and these members are Mali, Senegal, Kenya, and Senegal. Today, you have the Vice Presidency of ASEP, so the Presidency of ASEP, that is headed by Mali, and the President of ASEP becomes automatically the African Vice President in WAPES and a member of the Executive Board of WAPES. So the Executive Committee is Mali that speaks on behalf of the African continent. At the level of the board, we have four members who represent Africa to tell you the importance that ASEP has in WAPES. WAPES
has 82 members. I'm talking about the control of the executive secretary. And among these 82 con members, 19, 19 African countries are represented in these 82 uh, members. So we are part of the college of subscribers to WAPES. We contribute like other members that are annual, by voluntary contributions as well. We equally contribute for the implementation of the long-term strategy of WAPES. Our experts participated in this drafting. I'd like to add that in WAPES we have a position of auditor which is which is not less important because the post of auditor is occupied by Benin. Just to tell you how ASEP has an important role in WAPES. Regarding participation in activities of WAPES for other regions, ANSEP also contributes favorably and participates in activities of job promotion, think tanks, issues of migration, youth, and so on. So the challenges that are many and varied, which have some points, some common characteristics, accept participates in other areas of the world in activities organized by WAPES. Now, within the framework of the setting up of the uh, Network of communicator, uh, Communicators by WIPES organized in May 2019 by Pole Employer. ASEP played an, an important role within the framework of the contribution to strengthen this College of Communications to better pass across the image of APES and WAPES. So I want to deduct, Mr. President, that it is a well-greased mechanism. So let me tease you a little. I, I know you'll forgive me. If you were told that ASEP is an international ASEP. What if you were told that it is really not important? It is an African organization, which is a branch of WAPES in Africa. So we have programs that are common. This is my question. A job seeker will tell you, I can't find a job and you're talking to me about ASEP. What would you tell him? I will show him simply the pertinence of the PES that make up ASEP. ASEP is a homogeneous group today that federates initiatives and responses that which are contextualized from one expert to another. It is an important field for a job seeker for him to find targeted responses to his needs. Of course, the dean. Uh, Amote talked about it a while ago. You know, our economies in African PES are economies characterized by institutional, political, economic, financial crisis. But we equally have a difficulty, which is the mismatch between the demand and supply of jobs. So, ASEP corrects this mismatch. For example, you take a job seeker in Benin who did law and who can't find a job in the law market because his profile does not match the offers that are available on the market. But the ASEP initiative can have a job that matches his profile in Mali, Congo, for example. So that's the essence that's more concrete. Mr. Ombolo Leboso Tirano Afidi, he represents the International Labor Office on this uh, panel. I would like to talk about one of the main duties of the International Labor Office in Africa, the World Covenant for Employment, which was launched in 2009. From 2009 to today, 10 years later, what is this? what has become of this instrument? Thank you, Mr. Alain Beribi. To assess, if we want to assess this instrument, we may spend the whole day. I'll try to be brief, but I have a, a concern. I don't follow the media, whether in Cameroon or Africa, but I think 
we will you be in our interest to, to to have radio and television programs on employment i realize that in cameroon is mostly mostly political issues and so on so it will help the various stakeholders to express themselves on these issues and provide further information to the public now to answer your question on the major achievements of the world covenant world employment covenant looking at the mitigated figures of the labor market that's the unemployment rate the level of uh, the high unemployment rates we may think that nothing has been done we may even think of some fatality but what we should know is ask ourselves if nothing was done where, where would we be today because at a political and institutional level countries have made a lot of efforts and the issue of employment has been placed at the center of some strategic documents for example in cameroon within the framework of the growth and employment strategy paper employment is at the center of strategic documents of reference strategic documents and it's very important there are ministries in charge of employment all these to boost and promote decent employment even public contracts codes for example in Rwanda in South Africa issues of employment were included in public contracts so that it is companies so why do figures not change despite all this at the operational level there are programs that are implemented to favor the creation of jobs why do figures not change the reality is that we should be careful with the definitions and tools used to evaluate issues of employment because the definition in the definition they talked of the rate of unemployment now the definition according to the ILO is, is definite and it is scientific and focuses on the African context so that is why today we prefer to talk of on under employment that better translates the reality on the ground now why do figures not change indeed visibly there is a missing link between policy and strategic papers that are prepared at the operational level i think we should not stop at the middle of the bridge we should go to the end in countries like south africa there are laws that are voted in parliament that impose a certain number of criteria for the recruitment of the youth and sending youth in companies to boost uh, job creation i think we need to go to very concrete and operational measures to to make things change and reduce unemployment thank you mr ombolo i will give you a case where figures are progressing that's in france and uh, the current uh, situation on employment in france suggest that unemployment has dropped these recent months and I'll give the floor to Madame Florence Dumotier who is Director of International Affairs of Employment Poll in France so this drop in unemployment how did you go about it what is the strategy what is the French strategy Thank you for the question. Thank you for associating me. If the French situation is changing, it is thanks to work that uh, over the years the government has been working to obtain results. And if we take the operator of public services, that's Paul Emploi, it's 10 years of transformation. There was a fusion in 1989. So the service provision service and the support service was uh, 
merged and in 2015 there was some deconcentration some development and start the start of a digitalization and our strategic plan 2015-2020 to specialize our teams focus on results to avoid a public service that is non-performant that doesn't produce results then there was a digitalization of our activities so Pole employer today is a public service and it is paperless another strategic plan in gestation with a tripartite convention our donors are working on to continue to work on digitalization I want to come back to the labor market the labor market in France and partly Europe I know we have some European colleagues in the hall is a labor market that is polarized with two major challenges complicated challenges for which we think that intellectually we should satisfy them together but it is more complex than that now regarding there are there is a shortage of labor where there are sectors in the labor market where there is need for competence and the vulnerable population that is those people who have difficulties in having access to the labor market and it is on these two challenges we need to work support companies to meet employment offers for which there is lack of labor and accompany job seekers who are far from the labor market for a few months now the French government has put in place some uh, instruments there was the Penico law of September 20th last year that com accompanied companies on best activity on labor market and one of the last actions for Pole Employer was a recruitment of a thousand collaborators with long-term contracts whose job will be exclusively to work to provide uh, to fill in the to work for these jobs that have that uh, no one takes after 30 days so the question is why are these positions not filled meanwhile there is a demand that is a concrete example regarding the French labor market second thrust on the company an effort on intense uh, training we practice in France a lifelong training what does it mean so it means when I'm a salary earner in a company I should be able to improve my competence throughout my professional life it, it applies to salary earners for job seekers we have an intense training program and it is we work with our territorial partners I'm thinking of regional councillors so the company the job earn, uh, seekers and even our partners can help to fight against unemployment and obtain results thank you very much madam director I hope that we will be told who they will be told if this uh, approach can uh, be duplicated here ladies and gentlemen we are having a round table that is examining the relevance of public employment services in promoting an employment so the next phase will give the floor to the various directors general who are here to tell us about their various experiences in African countries. I will start with you Mr. Kami Mute. The pertinence of the public employment services for job promotion. Let me what do you think about it, sir? Mr. Moderator, I don't know which road you're talking about. What I know is that we we don't go we don't walk in the same roads on the same paths so when i got here there was a young lady who told me mr mute i'm your product i had my internship at the national employment fund and i had 
she says she attended one of our programs where we place an experienced student in a company the company pays half the charge we pay half the charge and at the end of it all we give her the half her salary for the first three months everybody believes you mr director general but we have the impression let me learn please let me learn you were talking of the road you know stories that are being told on the streets are not always i don't know if you you are be sick maybe you go to be sick the regional director of be sick is a product of the national employment fund in 1998 and today he's regional director so now this issue is pertinent what is known as public employment service is very recent in africa in france for example it is in 1967 an old country like france it is in 1967 that the necessity to create an organ to manage the labor market to serve as a link between the lab the labor market and job seekers was created in 1967 and we in africa I can situate the creation of PES in 19 after 1990 so like hardly 29 years ago and I can tell you that when I got to Spain in 1994 Spain is in the hall I realized that Spain was in 1994 was having its revolution it was a vocational training center and that's where companies went to recruit staff so I would like to explain what a public employment service is a public employment service has as main role the management of the labor market in simply put it means there are people who are job seeking and there are others who are offering the jobs if we leave this intermediation to be done alone there are companies for example a company where an employee in the production chain falls sick the company owner will go to the radio and make announcements or he would make put up uh, announcements to find someone to replace the sick person not to lose productivity he will he just simply needs to make a call to the public employment service which would consult his database and call someone to go and fill the gap. Now to please the pet apart product. So the person may arrive the company an hour or two later the call. So our role is to put to put in relation a perfect relation that is providing the exact uh, profile of to companies in need so we don't do it mechanically as it may appear because people because we in Africa people who come to register the public employment service are people are not who are not ready for example if you have a product people buy water and you go with a broom to the market it is people that people uh, people buy water sorry that people buy so these young people who get to the labor market don't always have the competence that's the kind of person the company wants so the public employment service would ensure to build this level to be up to standard such that it should be what the company wants and once its level is upgraded for example, if a company wants an accountant who knows computer, uh, who can produce, uh, who can pr use accounting software. Meanwhile, we have trainings with accountants who have never touched a computer. So the role of the public employment service is to give him adaptation trainings, so we help him to train in software, computer software. He will get familiar with them and he'll be ready to respond to a job offer once this youth 
is competent and can be proposed to a company, we would help him to find a job. That is not always said. In Europe, Madame Florence just said it a while ago, maybe it's more developed there, but here you find someone who is not seeking a job. But he tells you he's unemployed, he doesn't have a job. Are you registered with National Employment Fund? Yes. How many times have you gone there? No, I don't go there. He tells you, ah, the National Employment Fund is really no use. He is not job seeking. Our role is to bring these people to know how to job hunt. How do you go about seeking, looking for a job? Imagine someone who is an engineer and goes and writes, applies to casino, a business. So you have to, you must have target companies that can use your competence of engineer. Don't write to a shop that sells products for them to take you as an engineer. Those are the cases we have. So it is the public employment service that prepares the job seeker to to uh, to the job. Now the public employment service must deploy itself on the field because there are what was known as hidden jobs. There are companies. <coughs> where you see someone doesn't come to work doesn't come to work and the boss finds it long to start making an announcement but immediately he contacts the public employment service who would send uh who contact the public employment service who provide someone to fill the gap so this dynamic of not waiting not waiting for companies to come to the public employment service but the public employment service which every day we have job developers who go to companies to go and get job opportunities and training opportunities as well. And that's not all. Sorry I'm long, but we need to know what the public employment service does to be able to understand the pertinence of a public employment service. We don't only end there. Not only do we keep job seekers busy we equally take care of companies we organize seminars for example when we started a seminar on the, how to read a prepare a cv it was how to read a cv how to interpret a cv this was for business owners so we bring companies together business owners and it was half a morning it was supposed to be half a morning but it stayed till 10 pm they were interested why because when a company has a CV, he doesn't know where to start to assess the CV. Or when he goes for a job interview, the person is in front of him. The business owner doesn't have the pertinent questions to be sure that this person deserves to be recruited. So we also train companies on how to go about this. We don't end there. We have some tools. You see, this is the dynamism of a public employment service. We have these two uh, scholarships. We organize them every three months. It means in a specific place, we have companies, we have job seekers, and then we prepare that before. They, they come together and there are recruitments. I will end here now to say that this service offer, which is the service offer of a public employment service, you understand with me that from the 1990s to today, public employment services don't have these services in a complete offer because the budget is insufficient. And we find ourselves in a circle which will keep bringing the debate up. The more the public employment service finds it difficult to, pr to provide complete service uh, provision. Take for example, they have, their budget is, Pole Employer has, the budget of Pole Employer is two times the budget of Cameroon. They have 54,000 people to take care of 2 million or 3 million unemployed persons. 3 million un unemployed persons. If we had just 1 million, then the uh, numbers would be the quarter but in our public employment services I'm not trying to preach with talent we are hitting the nail on the head and we need to uh, analyze it 
before this is to give people an idea you know in their country they have 50 to 100 uh, unemployed persons for one councillor meanwhile for us it's about 3,000 to 4,000 so you see that our public employment services find it difficult to provide quality service and they are seen as insufficient to fight unemployment and there are government which at some point begin to ask themselves questions they say i have a public employment service what of what of what use is it that's the paradox if the public employment service could reach a level of service offer that is service offer its infrastructure to welcome the job seeker and the modalities to bring the two together conveniently i will not go back to what's done in their, in their country but something that's quite uh, convenient is a level the public employment service will want to achieve i have a little question before we move on are there any figures that tell us the proportion of job seekers who go to the national employment fund and those who don't go we don't have statistics on that but what i can say is that 55 percent of people who come and register at the National Employment Fund find jobs, 55%. So over 50% of people who register with the National Employment Fund find jobs. For the others, for the reasons I just <coughs> talked about, we register people who are even illiterate. We register people who left school in class six. So we have mass unemployment. Such people as Madame Dumontier, uh, the lady from Nefop was saying, these people without basic training need to develop competence for them to find jobs. But to find competencies, there is need for means. So there is need for money for them to be competent and for them to uh, get jobs. But our market share is estimated at 35%. So if there are any job seekers in the hall, you know what to do. Dear Directors General, I would like to hear you react on this issue of the pertinence of public employment services. Because as I was saying it from the outset, on the streets, no one says you are imposters, but there are others who think so. Their thoughts are so loud that they can be heard. Thank you. I think the DG, the GM of the NEF, has been very exhaustive on the mission of PES. I just like to add that, in reality, as it is said, it is sweating in the rain. When it's raining and you're sweating, you don't realize you're sweating. That's the kind of parable regarding the public employment service in Africa. Today, you have public employment services that do interesting, interesting work, but which is not perceived because we have mass unemployment. We have job seekers who don't have the required capacity to respond to the urgent need of the labor market. But you equally have difficulties on human resources and the economic structure. So I just want to say that regarding the various dates that Mr. Amute gave, I want to recall that contrary to some countries, Mali has its public employment service since before independence. ANP today was created in 1954. On at the time, it was called the the labor uh, the labor office. After independence, we removed territorial and put national. And then, the employment 
component was added to it. So it's a national employment agency. Just to say that from 2001, from its creation to now, one mission is matching demand and supply. From the outset, it was in Bamako, migrants who came from regions, rural exodus, how to help them find employers in town. It could be house helps, nannies, it could be house boys. Then it grew to graduates and so on. So just to say that this connotation of matching between demand and supply is been there for quite a long time. Now, talking about service offer, public service uh, service offers are almost the same in all public uh, employment services. There are trainings that we provide. Mr. Mute talked of companies. Comp companies are equally accompanied on uh, recruitment issues. He talked about the fact that we have job developers. We call them prospect us we are people who go and prospect in companies so they go to these companies and look for training need and look for employment need we equally have training for to our job seekers so that they should be able to match for those who can so we have an enlarged program of uh, reconversion or refresher courses both for the job seekers and for companies. And I also want to add that this is not including the self the self employment component. So when a job seeker comes, we do a competence based evaluation. So can it be we are set to see if it can be a potential employee or a potential job creator. So it's a whole process. And if you see that then from on those basis we give him what uh, direction to take in the first quarter of this year we had a satisfactory rate of of offers that's 45 percent just to say the effort that is being put in at the level of provision providing jobs but when you take offers that are satisfied by 45 percent and on another component you see 3,000 job applications that were dropped, job applications that were recorded in ANP, and for which we had 1,012 placements in the first quarter of 2019. So there are efforts that are being made on placements, on salary jobs, and self-employment regarding our various service offers but what the difficulty that remains is human resources financial resources today we have a performance contract with our supervisory ministry that is setting the quota of uh, employment uh, employment offers per job seeker but the quota is not attained because we have like 250 agents for the entire country you understand you see what result that can produce so we have almost the same problems like other pes but the pertinence of pes and the ANP for which i'm talking here this pertinence is clear regarding results and figures where there are external variables that need to be integrated to better relativize and understand the pertinence However, these difficulties are not inherent in the efficiency of this PS. Director General, I'll give you the floor for you to express yourself for the raison d'etre of public employment services. Please, as you take the floor, introduce yourself and tell us the country you're coming from. Merci beaucoup. Je suis Edmond Amoussou. Du... I'm Edmond Amoussou from Togo, the National Employment Agency one of the youngest. In August 2020, we will be 10 years. Pertinence is not obvious, both for the public 
and even for the government for two reasons for the public when I look at my statistics out of 10 people who graduate from vocational schools from universities three or four come to us because mentally and culturally parents who are of a different generation to who come to town found jobs easily by an uncle by an aunt a political relation or by themselves but the new generations who taste unemployment i spent three months after my certificate looking for a job they don't have the perception that you need to go reg go get registered and the four people who come and see me once they register they sleep in their homes and relax watching tv and waiting for me to call for them i said but do you have a cv do you, is your cv from mit or stanford for me to run behind you to call you if you don't hurry and come and see me then you are not alone you understand that you come and register you can't just register and go and sleep your life away when i tell them that they look at me they say uncle what do we do i said dress up as if you were going to work twice a week once a week go and charm the employment counselor even if he is not available just go and say oh big bro i've come to greet you at some point he'll get tired and at some point if there's something if something comes up he'll think of you so the attitude of the job seeker culturally is a is is an obstacle another element There is no employment in the formal sectors of our countries and the peri-urban areas. The economy doesn't create jobs, as Mr. Mute said. If there are no jobs to give, what do you do? You cry with the youth who come with you. Even your political friends, ministers, and so on, they can't have, find jobs for their children. The reason is that forty percent of people don't find um sorry sixty percent don't find jobs on their own and forty people forty percent don't uh, get jobs for them people sit and wait for their uncles police some political acquaintance to look for jobs for them but government also makes political declarations let me explain it is not the first time that strategy papers are unemployment are written and many of such emergent togo emergent senegal emergent mali once that is said it is forgotten there is no evaluation to say the president has promised 100 jobs in five years how can we get it he doesn't provide any money and how would i do that it's just like a home when there is no uh, food money people will not eat take care of the economy if you don't take care of the economy how would the uh, employment agency perform a miracle we are not pastors to perform miracles so that is what i could say that is being straight to the point and being very frank and honest nous avons quand même dans pas notre réseau toutes les solutions techniques depuis la Corée du Sud jusqu'au au Guatemala depuis la Russie jusqu'à l'Afrique we have all the technical responses we have the technical responses now ministers just need to go and see their president, talk with them, and get the job done. Businessmen need to be supported. It's the economy. It is the economy, and it is the economy. Thank you. As you said, when there is no job, you sit and you cry with the youth. I'm sure everyone will cry who is ready to cry with you, Mr. Director General. I will try to speak in French. I am an Arab. I will try to speak in French because many people here don't understand Arab, Arabic. 
or if there is uh, someone who can interpret me, just go. I'm the Director General of the National Office for the promo Job Promotion for Chad. After the intervention of the various SPS between, on the link between job providers and job seekers, in our experience in Chad, we want to talk of uh, agricultural loans because in Chad, the number of job seekers is increasing day by day. At first, in Chad, people who write their A-level were 5,000, 6,000 persons. Presently, the number has increased to 84,000. And the number of unemployed persons in Chad has increased, thus pushing the National Employment Agency to make an extra effort to come to the help of these youth. It has made efforts on the private sector and is creating auto self employment programs and agricultural loans. Regarding agricultural loans, our structure has funded farmers for five years. We have created over 130,000 seasonal jobs. 130,000 seasonal jobs through the agricultural loan project. And this program is being supported, is supporting green employment in, Af in Chad. You know, in Africa we have natural resources that need to be exploited to create jobs and avoid mass unemployment. If we want to respond to mass unemployment, then we need to invest in our natural resources. For that, our National Employment uh, Office has made progress in livestock and agriculture, livestock breeding and agriculture, and even self-employment. Regarding self-employment, over 4,600 projects have been f funded. It's a huge number that our agency has funded. So it is an experience we can share with uh, the other employment agencies on how to process natural, res natural resources and uh, develop our country's resources. I think I can stop here. Thank you very much, Mr. Director General. We'll move on to the third. Good morning, my name is Juvenal Dengo from Mozambique. I'm from Mozambique. Our institute was created in 2017. We are a very young institution. But before the creation of the employment post, there was a National Institute for Vocational Training the president of Mozambique verified, saw that there was weak, a weakness regarding employment. That's why he decided to separate employment from vocational training. So from 2017, we had the Institute for Employment and Vocational Training. And in 2016, the assembly approved the creation of the National Authority for Professional for Vocational Training because as the panel said we realized that there was a weakness on competence as far as companies were concerned so if we had to give importance to youth education to be able to meet the needs of companies before, there was the public employment service in Mozambique, but with the notion of the ILO on private uh, employment to liberalize the services, from that moment we realized a weakness because companies started contacting private structures for to recruit uh, to recruit privately and this weakened sorry 
the national employment service was created to revitalize the employment sector so for me we will see how to join WAPES to see how to develop other means to make our public employment service strong that is the challenge we are facing right now we have 20 vocational training centers and we are trying to work especially on vocational training because we realize that there are people who have competencies but whose attitude and know-how is a handicap to them finding a job so the next five year term the minister of labor has defined vocational training as a very important element to succeed in our functions and attributes i would like to end by asking this question they always talk of weak policies that cannot meet the needs of the youth there are companies as well how what is our take on the rate of the birth rate in our countries in 2017 in mozambique it was showed that we each woman has 5.5 children and homes are made up of at least five persons per home and every year is about 350,000 youth who enter the, lab, the labor market, the job market and the jobs available is even hardly half of the population available so the question is even if we have financial resources human resources shall we be able to match the demand and the supply can we not start thinking maybe with france sweden how i think so are you telling people to stop having children to reduce the number of children they give birth to maybe we should consider the pyramid and see where we we'll go to we need to find a solution for the youth thank you mr director general good afternoon all Youssef I'm uh, the head of the National Employment Agency for Tunisia. Even if it's not yet, I'd like to thank the Director General for this beautiful welcome to the country of the indomitable lions. <laughs> thank you for your compliment. It's a compliment. You have a very nice, beautiful national team, and you have a wonderful country you can be proud of. Regarding employment, I will take the responsibility to self criticize public uh, services, to tell you what's not working in our country. I realize that with poor employer, we have the same age because we were born in 1967. That's almost we are one of the oldest public employment service in Africa and what we should know is that we should be careful not to fall into old age it's not because we are very old that we should not stay we should not have a young spirit in as far as I'm concerned the world is progressing it is changing and we're talking about the youth because the world is more and more about the youth it is up to us a public employment service to follow this transformation we it was said a while ago that there was a lack of jobs for example in tunisia what surprises me is that we have strong demand but we have a strong offer as well so companies want to employ but don't find the right persons to uh, to recruit now that's where we ask ourselves the question to know if the duty of the public employment service doesn't go beyond 
providing jobs, how can they create a synergy between the Ministry of Higher Education so that the programs, the curricula in place should match the, 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 the needs on the ground as far as uh, employment are concerned? In my opinion, I think we need to work on this to open up to the environment. I think we have remained and focus on objectives that were more quantitative than qualitative and that is why we also find ourselves in a problem of figures and not talked much about the citizen you know when i took office four months ago very recently and when i went to my office As a reflex, I asked the financial director to give me the financial statement of the agency. Believe me, we didn't find many, many dinners. Not to say we, didn't, we almost didn't find anything apart from uh, salaries. So I had two choices. I don't go and see the minister and tell her, but you didn't want me. How can you send, put me in such a difficult position? Or tell myself I need to find solutions and I think and we have serious lack of human resources we have a hundred and nine more than 24 uh, entrepreneurship areas and we are we don't have the numbers but there are solutions today there are solutions the solutions pass from digitalization today if we set up a real digitalization policy of our services because we talk of the youth the youth don't come because they don't want to to give themselves any st uh, stress they want to find everything on their smartphones or any computer their computers they where they will not have any issues finding Facebook if we to go digital they will not find any uh, difficulties meeting us and we can provide our services in these applications and it will help us to economize human resource to be able to use them in other services like prospecting in the various companies so i think that today there are partners that are present in all countries the ILO and it's up to us African states to learn to formulate our needs you know our partners come they see us they tell you I have two million euro how can I help you how would I help you and then we say I don't know just give me the millions of euros just give the money then we'll see then we find ourselves with a partner who expresses our own needs it's okay if they don't know we will know then we find ourselves in situations where partners uh, don't formulate the real needs that we have my dear friends that is why it is up to us to work on these issues that's why I talked of auto criticizing because unless we do that we will not move forward we need to retrospect examine ourselves and once we do that we realize that digitalization is a priority so we know that job seekers are people who are seeking a service and that we are unable to we're unable to tell them what our programs are all about but today we know that the training of our employers is priority for them to face this new challenge my message is to say let's try to come together and conclude you end up with a little provocation the role of the African Association the role of WAPES in general should be a role of coordination you know the number 
of new ideas that I hear since this morning of good practices that I can apply in my country and I am very sure that I can give Tunisia's experience for others to, pref to, 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 to profit. That is the purpose. It's for us to come together because employment is not a cause for which uh, complacency is uh, permitted, is allowed. Employment guarantees security, it en 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 ensures stability, it en ensures uh, belonging to a society. If today we find a solution for employment, then we will find a solution for every other thing. I invite everyone to help develop WAPES together to create a network to share our ideas. Thank you. Voir, Monsieur le Directeur Général, juste pour savoir, est-ce que Adina is back in your coffers? Uh, Euros, rather. We are good commercial agents, so we need to go and get money where it's hard to get. So, Madame Dumontier wanted to react to give some uh, precisions. Pole employer is a fusion of uh, the national agency created in 1967. It's also the fusion of ASEDIC. There was a, net, a training network. There was AFPA which is not doing fine today, which was created earlier, 1958-1967, and Pôle emploi, 2009. A little update on Pôle emploi. What matters for us is the issue of performance of public service. Because you ask yourself, what is of what use are we? Now, if we consider the ups and downs of uh, the labor market, IMP, ASEGIC, Pole Emploi, we are all there present. We've had a thousand permanent jobs. We've tried to digitalize, and we are still there. But I can assure you that we have a director general. We are still there because we want to demonstrate our performance. And today, Pole Emploi follows 70 indicators. These are figures, 14 indicators, and we pride ourselves in that we attained 13 out of the 14. And these indicators were met for Pôle emploi France. Our ambition is that all citizens should be concerned by the good performance of public service. So these indicators, it's important. There are two that are very important. Two that come and seek the confidence of our users after the job every month we look at the satisfaction index meaning job seekers tell us if they are satisfied or not with the service and we have ambitious objectives and all our local agencies all our counselors work on a daily basis to know on what the job seeker is, um, is satisfied and sometimes the answers are not good uh, we process the qu they, they, they are, their answers every month companies tell us how they are satisfied or not with our service uh, companies tell us in writing and uh, we analyze and sometimes we call them back to correct and improve what I mean is that it is never won, but it's never lost. So we need to have confidence because our citizen the, uh, the job market can, can, can lead to a lot of anxieties. So it is up to us to make them feel confident in the fact that we we'll accompany them and both the companies and the job seekers. So it is uh, this that has to be set up and it is managed on a daily basis with managers who are trained and uh, accompanied to do this. Thank you very much. 
I will give you the floor, Mr. Director General, on the pertinence of uh, public employment services, the missions of public employment services. Thank you. I don't know if there's anything to add. Yuban Amwebedi, I'm Director General of the uh, National Employment Office for Benin. I would say your question is a little provocatory. You are telling me to go and join the unemployed because you are telling, you are, are you suggesting that my company should be closed because we are not useful? So I would answer you provocatively as well by saying that after all what has been said, if the National Employment Agency was removed in Benin, for example, what will happen? Maybe nothing. But private dynamics would take over the job that we are doing. The fundamental questions we ask ourselves at that moment. The unemployed who doesn't have means, who is desperate, would at this moment go to a private service, pay for the service. Will he have the means to pay the service to get counsel? Because we do that free of charge today with the help of the state. That is a big question. He doesn't have a job. He doesn't have any prospects. He doesn't know the labor market. He has to be provided services. But if it's the private sector, the private sector pays. But what, for example, when you go to the hospital, you pay. Even if you are you had an accident, you pay for consultation. So. So public employment services is important in that it provides the services free of charge and that already is provide. I just want to support to say, I don't know how your constitution says, but the constitution of our country says that the state must find jobs for everyone. It is constitutional. And in that role of the state that must find jobs for everyone the state must organize to have in institutions intervention institutions that's what obtains in the world you go to france you have huge budgets same in germany because it is a role of the state to provide jobs it is not up to the citizens to want pay money i'll end by saying that public and private employment service i don't know if they are in your countries a private employment service cannot provide mass employment. It cannot be at Kusiri, Ngaundire. It cannot consider people who do not go to school, who have no training, and so on. We welcome these people and we accompany them as graduates. So we give them the tools, we give them the means to be trained, and we help them. That's the role of the state. That's what we do. We are public employment services, and it is the duty of a state to provide this service to the population. Another problem is, are we working efficiently? Why are we not working efficiently? So I would end, I will not be long. After explaining that, why we existed, I want to say that you are right to ask the question. Sometimes we ask a question ourselves. When the president came, asked, what's your use? And for two years, we wrote something which he approved and said we are useful because that's what he always does. Every structure, if you don't prove how useful you are, they shut you down because you don't just create to create. So the second thing I'll tell you is we don't create jobs. The private person who wants, no private person does not want to recruit someone without, with ex, without experience. But if no one wants to give people the opportunity to have ex, an experience, then we are in a, it's an earning circle. This is where we find measures that the government is putting up for the youth 
in our agencies and uh, the various countries, we give the youth the opportunity to acquire experience in a company with state funds to solve this problem because the private wants someone that is operational immediately. He wants an accountant who knows the job already. But this private person is not ready to take a beginner if there is no one who supports like our governments and our states. So that is why I would say there is routine, there are the scenes of the administration, that is once we are settled as civil servants, we see things coming and then the performance that is that we are that we are being asked for becomes difficult. So that is how we try to see how to continue being performant in bringing public service, being useful and for and how to use the money that is placed at our disposal to place this youth to have experience. So to conclude, public employment services are necessary, if not indispensable, and you keep your job, of course. I'll, I use the same street like you. I ask myself the question always. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'll suggest you listen to someone who will talk about various viewpoints. Former Director General of uh, the National Employment Office in Congo, today he is a member of Parliament of the Congolese nation. He is sensitive to the things I said, Mr. Andre Nyang Elenga. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Oui, j'ai les deux vestes. Parlons de la première. Yes, I can speak in these two capacities. First of all, I'll talk on public employment services. Sincerely, sometimes it hurts us because a public employment service is a government service. We left Waga in 2004, we gathered and we thought things, the ball was rolling because decisions that our, this, our heads of state and members of gov and heads of government took in Wagadugu was for me the take off of public employment services so they gained consciousness of youth employment. That in all government programs youth employment should take priority unfortunately i managed i managed wapes waga plus 10 did not meet to uh, evaluate but in our discussions we realized that almost nothing has changed every country worked individually the sub-region, as a mark today, has not evolved. But in countries, there, are, there is progress. When a state cannot do something better for the youth, then it is the responsibility of the PS. In Congo, the greatest employer is the state. Today, they suffer from the uh, dictates of the international organization. It's not the first decision. When we are told not to recruit, and there are youth who keep defending their theses in other countries, coming back to the country, the only door is the National Employment Office. Another time, we should, we should ask ourselves the question, has the state given the means to this structure for it to be dynamic enough to solve the problem of all Congolese who return to seek jobs? Since the president keeps promising jobs to everyone, we have many programs and it's up to us to see how to manage a target public. There are 
disabled persons. There are disabled persons. It's up to us to find jobs for them. They are citizens. There are school dropouts. These are Congolese citizens. They need to find jobs. There are those who went to school who and ended at some level without qualification. They only have academic certificates. Someone who has a, an A level. Meanwhile, our sphere of competence is companies. No one creates a company to solve the unemployment of Congolese. No one. The company is created to make profits. So a Congolese who is recruited must be able to bring this contribution, contribute to the success of the company. But we should not fold our arms. You don't fold our arms because we have the state mission. The Prime Minister and other members of government are all talking about it. Many programs are developed, as many have said, to every category of job seekers there is need for a program. And to that, we need to review the best workers of the office. Is this, are they able to manage all these programs? How many counselors do we have? To solve this problem, we need to examine our budget. As my colleague from Togo said, there are PESs today that have not been paid their salaries. How would they mobilize? How would they be uh, motivated if their salaries are not paid? Would they be able to receive his patients? Meanwhile, he himself is hungry. He didn't leave anything back home. Because employment is a weaker lever of government in our country. When it's elections, youth employment, youth employment, it becomes a political slogan. But when it has to become concrete, managing an employment structure in South Saharan Africa, I think everyone knows that it is not easy. There are times when you are useful and there are times when you are obliged to fasten your belt. Sometimes you are even ashamed to go to work because you will find the youth as if they were in a political gathering. You just need to put up a job offer. I would like to understand your thought. You say public employment services represent what for you? Is it indispensable? Or is it essential? It's very indispensable. It should be made a priority because the future of the country is the youth. If we don't use the youth, if we don't take care of them, if we don't train them to meet the market needs, education gives them another training. The labor market needs specific uh, specialties. A while ago, someone was talking of an engineer. We need an engineer to work in a, a drilling area. But you who are coming with your history certificate, I'm not sure you'll be recruited. But if you had a, a certificate in petroleum engineering, then you'll be recruited. That is why we, we ourselves carry out a reconversion when we face these job seekers. When we meet them, they don't have any specialization. Say, but when we, are not, we study their CVs, we realize that this one can spend 10 years and will never have a job. In Congo, there is a phenomenon. When you say perfect mastery of English language, out of 100, you can find only 10 and maybe 2. You see, the areas where our agency tries to build and train uh, these uh, job seekers, mastery of the compu of computer tool. A while ago, someone said you can you can have a, a master's without having never ever put on a computer. So today, we need to. 
build the capacity of public employment services. Thank you very much, Honorable. So we'll take 30 minutes to discuss with the with the participants. Please be brief in your intervention because you will not exceed 30 minutes. Est-ce que vous pourriez vous pourriez donner le micro là, s'il vous plaît? Vous avez failli avoir deux micros, monsieur. Oh, merci. <laughs> merci. Uh, je m'appelle. Uh... Thank you. I'm called Isaac Bichara. I'm the workers' representative, and I think that I've met many participants here in Ouagadougou in 2004, 2009. So I work in the field of employment. And I do think that thinking about employment here cannot be done uh, in the absence of the Ministry of the Economy. As he rightly said, sometimes we make a confusion between uh, employment organizations and the Ministry of the Economy. Employment is a cycle. When you are in a country, you should have your development policy you should have some economic policy and it is on that basis that you can determine the needs and it's after the needs now the ministry of employment and vocational training can design the employment policy and after that you have the vocational training policy then we'll go to companies where we'll have what we call the professional management of competence and employment and within that structure we can only create jobs when companies are created. It is through uh, company creation that jobs can be created. Secondly, it is when companies do develop that employments are created. And uh, on that basis, you can start working with the other ladder. And now they come to help companies in job creation or in company creation and by so doing, job creation if that is not done upstream we only wait that one morning uh, job should be created i think you wouldn't have done anything now what are the dangers employment faces i think the director from chad talked about the issue of demography this should be clearly underscored i'm talking about the director from mozambique rather when you don't apply family planning because in every country it is based on income level you cannot be in a situation where there are no employments but you allow families to be developed because in africa we say making children is making money such ideas are behind the times and secondly, you do within countries what we do, commercial training. I was discussing in this room with the Ministry of Higher Education once, uh, questioning them on the reasons why in every crossroads in Cameroon you have universities and higher institutions of learning. And you have some fields that are not needed by the Cameroonian economy. And you see parents paying two millions to train a child whereas the Cameroonian economy doesn't need such skills once they graduate they can't find a job whereas they were trained we also have the issue of rural exodus in Cameroon nowadays as you all know generally the villages are getting empty everybody is swimming into Yaoundé Yaoundé is not an industrial city, it's a political city where you only have civil servants and where only civil servants are recruited. How can everybody come to live in Yaoundé? To do what? So we have such developmental issues that Cameroon has to tackle as fast as possible. In the same token, we have the issue of precariousness of jobs i think the director from benin touched on this 
and I think that the director from Mozambique raised the same issue. I think it is a danger for uh, private employment agencies, and I think this issue has to be tackled as fast as possible in countries because these are reasons why there is precariousness in jobs. This was just a contribution. I don't have any issue to raise. Thank you. We do thank you as well. Thank you. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, for recognizing me. I am Brima Sidibe. I'm the head of the Cooperation and Migration uh, in the National Employment Fund in Mali. I do think this round table is already carving some strategies because under the inspiration of the President of Honor, we had to ask ourselves questions on the relevance of our mission in order to convince or to persuade all the market actors on the necessity and the relevance of the public service for employment. I think somebody uh, regretted this, and it is the one who took the floor before me, because all the actors are not here. We are banking on the media and the print media to support us in this endeavor, because it's of utmost importance. If I listened keenly, like all the participants in this room, I think that the basic problem is at the political level. What is the problem we are raising? It is the lack of adequacy between those who are living institutions, I mean learning institutions, and those who are creating jobs so that they would be able to use the products of those institutions. I think that is the first level. Secondly, how to support companies. It is not us upstream. We do intervene somewhere along the process after the decision maker decides to create a company and wants to have some companies. That's when they come towards us to have those informations. Notably, the availability of human resources on the market The capacity for of those human resources to actually have the requisite human resources when they created their companies. And the decisions that have to actually influence the process is not us when we talk about rural exodus. How how can we tackle rural exodus? Uh, the Director General from Mozambique and from Benin raised this problem of demography. That is, how can a PS have an incidence on the growing demography in the country? I do believe that their real problem is, first of all, at the political level and the strong messages that have to transpire from this roundtable and from this workshop is to invite those decision makers to tackle the issue globally. Sir, if I can summarize your submission. I mean, everything is okay in the PES. No, that's not what I've said. I didn't say that, please. I didn't say that. I rather said that upstream, some issues have to be tackled before they spill out on the service public missions. I think the Director General from Mali said it. The fundamental mission of a PES is to bring together the demand and the supply on the market. And that's what the ILO is telling us to do primarily. It is intermediation between the two poles. That is those who need jobs, those who need employment, as well as those who are looking for workers in order to actually meet the needs of the economy. Now, to make this possible, other missions intervene. You have 
the mission to strengthen uh, youth employment. It is also to support companies in their recruitment processes. It is the mission to build capacities and to help people change their field. And I think we are not the one creating all these issues. I think they are caused by other factors, either from our economy or our society. I have two questions, and I'm addressing this to the Director General for Mozambique. He talked about reform or reforms which actually uh, happened in his country through the setting up of National Employment Institute and a national institution for vocational training. And if I understood him very well, between those two organizations, there is a national agency for professional absorption. And he talked about the National Authority for Professional Absorption. I would like to understand because I think I welcomed that experience because an authority in charge of professional absorption can help to curb some of these problems. So I would like to understand the cooperation or collaboration mechanism which exists between all these institutions and that authority. Thank you so much. Mr. Director General, you have the floor. Give him the microphone, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I am a member of a board of directors of the National Authority for Vocational Education. That is an authority which is above all the vocational training institutions at the Ministry of Labor Employment. We have an institute in charge of vocational training. Within the ministry uh, in charge of housing, we also have some private institutes. Uh, that is the organization that gives you the authorization to carry out an activity or certification is the national uh, institution or authority in charge of vocational training. But unfortunately, uh, the fund is not in place yet due to the difficulty to find a platform to collect the funds from the various institutions. So we have the institute in charge of vocational training, which takes care of all the initial trainings. Uh, I mean, and they have means for a maximum period of a year. And uh, that institution is part of the various institutes. So the authority is a high level institution, which uh, actually takes care of, vocation of vocational training in Mozambique. I don't know if I've answered your question fully. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? You have the floor. Thank you. I am from Kradat and uh, we accompany WAPES in uh, the training of PES. I'd like to take the floor into capacities. First of all, a level of training of PES we realize that two training sessions are organized but we don't know and we are asking ourselves the question to know if there is a follow-up framework that allows the follow-up or the evaluation of the various contributions from these uh, trainings because it's very important that after trainings like the ones organized very often there should be some evaluation. This question is to who, please? It is addressed to the president of WAPES. And my second question, can you reformulate? I would like to know if there is a framework that helps to monitor 
and evaluate the resolutions from the trainings offered to PES. That's, that question is to you. I have a second question to the Director of the National Employment Fund. I'm a product of the National Employment Fund. I was recruited in Kradat in an indirect way because the counselor fell on an invitation to off, uh, ap apply and she sent my CV and I was recruited. Many Cameroonians are in my case. At the National Employment Fund, is there a platform that enables people who are recruited indirectly through the National Employment Fund should effectively share such information to encourage the National Employment Fund to develop this platform which could be more beneficial? I would like to end here. Thank you. Mr. President. I just want to say that at the level of, uh, the, uh, of the WAPES Bureau, we are structured in zones. You have the Central Africa zone, which is in the coordination. The coordination is carried out by the Director General of Public Employment Services of Congo Brazzaville. And uh, for Southern and East Africa, we have Kenya. The Director General, Madam Edith, who is in charge of coordinating PES actions for Southern and East Africa. You have West Africa, Senegal, Mr. Njeng, who takes care of monitoring and evaluation. So, the Secretariat General of APES is taken care of by the Director General of uh, the PS of uh, Burkina and uh, you equally have uh, Mr. Faisal Issa who was here not long ago who is in charge, who is an auditor kind of. So to say that regarding coordination and synergy of action we have zonal structuring that help us to capture the difficulties and have solutions per zone contextualize them and during our various uh, our various workshop bring in the necessary corrections and carry out the follow-up required true theoretically the tools are there but practically looking at the financial difficulties i want to admit that this implement the setting up of the system is slow but we keep hoping that as as uh, as our uh, weapons grows that interregional coordination is set up this system would enable the mobilization of additional resources that would facilitate this follow-up because i agree with you that follow-up is important at this level to achieve the expected outcomes, especially in various contexts and different realities of the uh, labor market of each SPE, of each PES, Director General of the National Employment Fund. I think you should say a word before me, because we are talk, since we are talking about, we are talking about streets, now, in one street corner, you meet someone, you, you find something different from what you hear. I think the question of my product, if I can call him so, is it's a proposal, a very objective proposal that he is making. First of all, at the level of accept we train these persons in Kradat we form job counselors on how to counsel people on job on job seeking amongst other activities now pending what the president may think i don't think that we don't have a system in place to evaluate to see if there is any progress that has been recorded 
on the training we've provided in training and employment when they went back to their structures was there any progress made in their job on the way they work i think uh, is a suggestion you are making and secondly is a suggestion as far as we're concerned because as i was saying a while ago in cameroon you cannot go to one or two villages without seeing the national employment fund you cannot go to a street in Yaoundé. Take any street. You will not end that street without seeing traces of the National Employment Fund. Whether something that was financed or people with whom we were working as partners or persons we have placed like the speaker of a while ago. But what is lacking is this huge information, this platform. And I think my collaborators are here and they are hearing because many questions have been asked what is the national employment fund what have they done and we try to to, to to spread the information but maybe that was the wrong channel maybe beneficiaries like you should go and spread the news and it brings us to the theme the pertinence of pes so we should examine how the beneficiaries of our uh, services and god alone knows how many success stories there are there is one in Limbe who just had the prize of the president of the republic. There are many of such. There are entire villages. There are entire villages that we've transformed. Completely transformed. We brought electricity, sent their children to school. They have built schools through simple agricultural programs. We can go and visit them if you want. But time is against us. Why? Because they went from one... 100 uh, production of 100 Irish potato to 5,000, 10,000 thanks to funding from the National Employment Fund. Thank you for your question. It's a wake up call, and we will try to work on this. A last question, please. Thank you for giving me the floor. I'm Bitoko Modest, Director of Studies and Planning at the uh, DRC, Kinshasa. My worry is at the level of tools. Tools that enable us, we PES, to work well. In our country, we had a problem on unemployment rates. ILO published the rates, and curiously, the Prime Minister also publishes his own rates with the Central Bank, and this created a, an outcry, and we had to correct that. I also just heard the Director General of Cameroon who talks of of unemployment rates. These rates that are not nowhere close to the African reality. There are criteria and indicators that practically don't meet African realities. But we are always forced to follow the ILO, to follow international indicators, and to follow international criteria. At the level of ASEP, we would not be able to transform and consider African realities because the criteria or indicators that come out from international conventions don't always meet African realities. To avoid this confusion, confusion can we, PES from African zone, try to see how we can contextualize 
all the criteria to be able to see have the right rates and indicators and uh, that reflect African realities. I think that's my worry. So I'll represent the representative of the ILO to answer this question that I'll reformulate in my own way. Does the ILO and other international uh, organizations not leading us astray? You set your indicators, you decree rates. Are you not leading us astray? I would like to start by reassuring our participants the Demo Democratic Republic of Congo is a member of the International Labour Organization. So when the International Labour Office meets to define indicators and tools that will be used to uh, measure, assess these concepts, the Democratic Republic of Congo and many other countries are part of the experts who define the tools used to define these indicators. Now, we are not leading you astray. Comme je disais, sont très précis et leur their use requires scientific uh, rigor. The reality is that these indicators are used in the African context. A while ago, we talked of the youth who are in their homes. They don't go job hunting. In this measurement indicator, we need to, for an active quest for a job when you stay in your home we consider that when you don't go to job hunt we consider that you are not on you are not unemployed there's another element that should be considered you need to have worked at least one week during the period preceding the investigation so you see there is a number of elements that make that when we have to calculate the employment rate, it gives a low rate for African countries. But that is not what matters, because what matters is that we can, we always end up defining complementary indicators that help us to consider concepts of uh, unemployment. Today in Africa, we are all we all agree that it is not the indicator of unemployment that's important. We it's instead concept of underemployment, the development of the informal sector that helps us to improve youth employment and working conditions. Director General, thank you very much. Why do politicians like to tropicalize everything? Because political communication is different. Beware not to fall in that trap. Be pedagogic and have elements to express yourself in simple terms to say the reality of the problem to the people. I see all civil servants of ministries talking about the figures from the ILO as if they were invent they were going to invent. You need to be serious. Why do our Africans what particularities do you have? They say you don't have, you don't carry your industry correctly. I want to con communicate otherwise that you don't work. Let's get serious. Let's not try to tropicalize these rates. We are members of the ILO and we participate every three years in the meeting in Geneva where that work statistics are defined. In Waimu, we have a we have a battery of 28 indicators that we fill and, pub and uh, make public. The politician wants us to change figures. No, we can't do that. As uh, the participants of the REC talked of indicators, and uh, he talked of uh, accept as wondering if ASEP cannot contextualize 
in a level of other PES. I want to tell you something. In African PES, there is there are, there is no contradiction with the ILO, but I have a detail to bring. For example, take the case of WAIMO, the West African Economic and Monetary Union. At this level, we realize as the representative of the uh, ILO said, when you take the three criteria to be considered as a jobless person, having no job, being available to uh, receive, to, to, to have a job, one of the criteria which, which is being an active search of a job, when you conduct a survey in RPS, then you will see, you will leave aside quite a good number of uh, job seekers and you have a figure that doesn't reflect the African reality of our unemployed. That is why in Waimo, with the ILO of course, we agreed on the principles of discouraged job seekers. We define a, a rate of, of discouraged uh, job seekers that considers those who are not actively searching for a job. So for ASEP, it is within the framework of these workshops that will study and contextualize our data analysis. Remember I was talking about coordination per region, Central Africa, West Africa, and so on. That's why we structured a step like this to be able to have the context of every region. So, at level of PES, we don't have any problems. We don't have uh, any issues with the ILO as well. I would like to seize the opportunity to say that in the, the within the framework of the international conference, ILO needs to consider ASEP and ASEP and WAPES as two different entities in the evaluation in the evaluation of policies, indicators, and so on. This year, there is a drop, and we hope that it should the partnership should be improved with our organizations who are important partners of the ILO. Thank you very much. I have to be very sharp. The minister is already down and people are hungry. So please, I want to say that Mr. Modest, the question the question you raised has been raised for so long and the ILO is very aware. As I said, if every continent has its own rate, then there will be no comparison at the world level. You will not be able to say that the rate in Europe is this percent and Africa is this percent. So we will be at a level of the international community because we have to compare things that are comparable. If definitions are not the same, we cannot compare the rates. That is why the ILO set this rate. What the president of ASEP is saying is not just uh, reflected in YMO, but it is a figure of the ILO that has decided to drop the figure a little depending on the criteria such that today we still have the ILO rate but we have a rate where persons discouraged persons are encouraged are considered that's what I wanted to tell you it is not a forgotten thing it is dynamic and you are right because we asked this question in one of the meetings of the ILO and they were very open but they cannot only just consider Africa. Africa is not alone in the world. There is a world and five continents. And as my, my friend Amosu said, we cannot uh, want to uh, set ourselves aside. Meanwhile, there are things that are uh, decaying. Meanwhile, there are technologies that can uh, make them, that can that can uh, repair them. For example, in the 1950s, there were oil refineries in my village in Bafia. So it's up to us to work. I would like to thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We were talking about the relevance 
of SPES in job uh, promotion. After all what I've heard, I will register at the National Employment Fund this afternoon. Thank you for your kind attention. Merci, euh, merci, Monsieur le modérateur. Vous serez effectivement inscrit au bureau 4 où nous traitons.